for the Bible said that he that cometh to God must come believing that he is, that he is a reward to them that diligently seek him. Come on, everybody. Let's call Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a wonder you are. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a wonder you are. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a wonder you are. Oh, Jesus. What a wonder you are.
Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing this evening? Fine, yourself. I'm doing well, thank you. Good to see you all. Please forgive my voice. <clears throat> I'm still getting better here, but um, so just bear with me, please. It's good to see everyone. I pray that everyone had a blessed day on today. Praise God. Um, and so we're just going to go ahead. We're going to get started. Um, first, I want to say to everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to Iron Sharpens Iron. Amen. Glad to have you with us. We're excited about today. We always come uh, with our whole minds and our whole heart and just ready to get into the word and fellowship with each other on this evening. So I'm excited about the word and I hope you are too. Welcome again. Um, if you know anyone that would like to fellowship, they're looking for a good place to fellowship and they have questions about the word or just wanna share and grow in the word, please invite them every Tuesday at seven o'clock. We'd be more than glad to have them. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So before a couple things, before we get started, just a reminder, as we get into our word, um, please remember to keep your mute buttons on so we don't get the back, background distractions. We wanna hear what, the, what everyone has to share and what everyone has to say is important. So please let's respect each other, keep that mute button on. When you get ready to make your point, just take the mute button off and go ahead and share with us what the Lord has put on your heart or if you have any questions or anything of that sort. Okay, praise God. Um, so yeah, after about 40 minutes, it'll log us off. And then after it logs us off, everybody just log back in if you can. And then we'll wrap up for the end of the evening and we'll pray out. Okay, so our mission, <clears throat> excuse me, our mission is to come together weekly, as I stated, for Bible study. But we most definitely enjoy and it's blessed to have fellowship. So we come together every Tuesday. What we're wanting to do is sharpen each other, uh, sharpen each other in the word. Uh, we learn from each other in the word. Praise God. That's how we grow. Okay, not only that, but we're building relationships, personal relationships with one another as we come together and fellowship we're building. And that's what the Lord has called us to do. First uh, John 3, 23, and this is his command to the believer. It is to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. And how we do that is we come together and fellowship and we build real genuine relationships when we come together. We're getting to know each other. We're building authentic relationships and authentic love for one another. So thank God for this form. Thank God for each one of you. I'm gonna go ahead into prayer and then we'll get started. Praise God. Father God, I thank you for this day, Father. I thank you for each and every one that is present on this evening. I thank you, Lord, for how you kept each of us all day long, Lord. I thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you for your protection on today, Father God. Father God, I thank you for every person that's present here right now. I thank you for them and, and their hearts and their minds to want to seek you in these last days. It's truly a blessing to have a mind to want to seek you, Father, a mind to want to draw closer to you, a mind to want to build up our relationship within the body of Christ. We thank you for that mind. It's through your spirit. It's by your spirit that we ha have this desire. So we thank you. We could be doing anything else, but we're here. We're here to come together in one spirit for you to fill us up with your word. Pray for deliverance on today. I pray that the mind will be set free on today. I pray that someone will get the answer that they've been seeking for on today. Hallelujah. God bless each and every family member. Holy Spirit, have your way here on tonight. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Any spirit that's not like you, anything, any spirit that comes to hinder, any spirit that comes to divide, any spirit that is not of you, we cast it out and we bind you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way on tonight. We thank you and we praise you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> yes amen praise god so we got a good word we got a good powerful word today i always say that because the word is good it's so inviting especially in this time right now i just i've been just finding myself just stuck in the word <laughs> all day long and that's when it's getting good so we're going to just um we're going to just establish our footing 
and the word of the Father. Because a lot of people seem to understand that they don't realize that Jesus is all over the Old Testament. And of course, he is the New Testament. So let's just look at how the Father introduced us to the Son. And, and let's just look at the sure, the, 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 the sure footing in this that it is the Father that establishes that no man may boast. It is because of the Father's doing that we're here as branches connected to his vine, which is the right hand that is Jesus. That's the power. The right hand of God is Jesus. That's the power. So let's get in here at, um, I put it down in the footnote of Isaiah 60 at 19 and 22, if anybody want to follow along with us, but I'm going to read it. The sun shall be no more by light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. So we see the sun is going away, and we see the moon is going away, and Jesus which the Father has established is going to be our continual light that's going to be in our life and when we go to the promised land. Thy sun shall be no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. So we see the days, the sun, the moon is going, and our morning being here on this earth, going through pains and stuff, all of that is going to be gone. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. So we know the sun's going away here and the moon's going away here. So we know this land is the promised land where the light is going to be continual on us. That's going to be radiating. That's going to be the light of Jesus. The branch of my planning, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. You see this? This is going to be the work of the Father's hand through Jesus that no man may boast. He's the one that brought us as branches. No man can come to Jesus unless they've been drawn by the Father. This We're going to be the branches, and of his planning is Jesus Christ, which is divine. The work of my hands that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. This is beautiful right here because we're going to be a sure footing and the promised land that we're going to inherit and we're going to be continually there with people that are righteous, with people who the Father has selected and drawn to his son, Christ Jesus. This is beautiful. So as we get in this word, let's talk about the plant. Let's talk about the vine. And I titled it, Men Gather and Men Cast, because we got to understand right here in John 3, 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. When we come into this world, we're of the flesh. But during time in our seeking and finding, we can find Jesus who's close. He will allow us to be born again in the spirit. Now, remember at the end of this word that we're going to get into, at the end of this, men are going to cast and, and throw you into the fire if you ain't of the spirit. And Jesus is going to gather. And gather us up to the promised land. Hallelujah. So out of John 15, 3 and 6, let us get started. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you, Jesus says. Abide in me and I in you. As we see in this word, it is conditional that you abide in him and he will abide in us. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So I wanted to stop right here for a minute because we've got a lot of things going on in our life, in our personal life. And Jesus is letting us know right here that you, you can't do anything unless you abide in him. If we have anything that's going on in our life that we're dealing with and we can't get past it, we have to look at the word. We have to look, are we connected to the vine? If we're not bringing about fruit in our character, are we connected to the vine? We can't do nothing unless we're connected to the vine, Jesus tells us. Unless we're connected to him, we can't do anything. If a man abide not in me, he says, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, 
and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. So we see, we got two things going on here. That which is connected to the vine and born of the spirit is going to be gathered by Jesus in the father's timing. And those that are not born of the spirit are going to be gathered by men and burned. Mm -hmm. Amen. Please put our phones on mute, please. If your phone's not on mute, could you please put your phone on mute? Thank you. Hallelujah. That was a nice little tingle right at the right time. <laughs> Amen. So we see we've got a wonderful word right here going on in Christ Jesus. So that's why I just say it's imperative that we continue to stay connected in the vine. Remember the vine in Christ Jesus calls us for 1 John 1, 7, the fellowship and the blood of Christ Jesus to continue to work in our life. It calls for us to continue to do the work that Jesus has called us to. So the floor is open, saints. If anybody want to elaborate on that and bring some clarity to this, we know there ain't no one save, always saved because you have to be connected to the vine. You can disconnect yourself from the vine is what this word is telling us. Or you can stay connected to the vine is what this word is telling us as well. Also the scripture says those that endure to the end. So that lets us know that once saved, not always saved. We have to endure to the end. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank God for endurance. <laughs> Well, I have a family member, and I've been knowing her since she was a girl, and she's in her 60s now. And when I read this first part, now ye are clean through the word, which I have spoken to you, and she have cleaned to the word all her life. And I, I'm saying this because I see what God can do, mm -hmm. has done in her life. You know, it, it probably is of those two, you know, and uh, and it said, Abide me, and I will abide you. And she has always clinged to the vine, you know, to Amen. God all mm -hmm. her life, you know. Amen. But the point, what I, you know, really see in her is that, uh, uh I think I missed. If a man abide not in me, well, not that one. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much mm -hmm. fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same can bring much fruit. Mm -hmm. And I have seen her witness, you know, all her life, even as a little girl. She was witnessing when she, and she has really brought a lot of fruit. Amen. You know? Yeah. And then I say to myself, I, I can, how can I bring fruits like you? You know? <laughs> yeah. I see. I see what you're saying here, Lemuel. Yeah. But just for us to clarity to understand this, is that our co continual connecting to the vine will yeah. bring about Galatians 5.22. See, this ain't a work-based salvation. But what you will have, what James tell us, is that once you get endowed with the Spirit, you will have some works. See, the fruits okay. of the Spirit is long-suffering, mm -hmm. patient, kindness. That's the character okay. and the fruits that we're yeah, growing. Right. Witness, uh -huh. you're going to do that. Once you've been commissioned by Jesus and you've been quickened by him who giveth life, you're going to go witness and do all of that. Mm -hmm. that's a part of his power this works right here I mean this fruits right here is talking about the fruits of your character Galatians 5.22 yeah I see what you're saying yeah amen anybody else want to elaborate on this if not we could look at John 15 through 16 just to give you some more time to, to let it soak in. I love it. Ye have not chosen me, Jesus says, but I have chosen you and ordained you. See, when you got ordained, Jesus ain't talking about giving you no certificate or writing on no piece of paper. He talking about dropping that oil on you, that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. 
See, Jesus knew when you take your fruit forward that you're going to encounter the world who can cause you to diminish the fruit that's in you if you don't witness right, if you don't continue, continue to stay connected to the vine, if you don't continue to stay connected to fellowship. But Jesus wants us to go forth and win souls and keep our fruit as well while we're doing it, that your fruit should remain, that whatever so ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Staying connected to the vine brings about, you know, a reward. It brings about, you know, Jesus just answering your request to the desires of your heart. Let it be in the will. I was going to say, um, I was thinking, you know, when we stay connected to the vine, which is Jesus, you know, then the Lord gets the glory. He gets the glory out of our life when we stay connected, you know, and I just wanted to say that that's important because when we're not connected, then if we're not connected to the vine and the branch, then that means all that we're doing, we're doing for our own glory. We're doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for flesh. If we're not connected to the vine, I mean, we can say it's in the name of the Lord, like so many people do. They have their own agenda. Right. But they, they but not being disconnected, that's the difference. Because otherwise you're moving in your own might, your own power, if you're not connected. So I'm just thinking, you know. I want to make sure and I want to know that everything that I'm doing is the will of God, that I'm connected and that the Holy Spirit is leading me. You know, I want the Holy Spirit. I want God to be connected to what I do, mm -hmm. whether I'm out here witnessing, whatever I do, I want to do it to the glory of God. And that's the difference. Some people are doing things, but is it to the glory of God? Mm -hmm. Amen. I agree. I agree. I like this blueprint. I like that you said that, honey. I like this blueprint because it lets us know, like you were just saying, Lemuel, too, as well. You can see the works in people. You can see the, the fruits in people, I should say, mm -hmm. just like you can see the works in people. You hear me? See, when we're looking at what Jesus tells us to look at, then we're looking at the fruits that should be evident in, in people's life. And people are at various stages. We're all still growing, of course, as well. But you should be some, there should be some evidence of the fruits manifested in the person's life. And let's not get those fruits mixed up with people having big homes and big buildings and all of that. See, that's where men get distracted at. See, the one thing Samuel, when he walked in Jesse's house and God had to tell him once he was looking at all them boys of big stature, that men look on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. See, man is still looking on the outward appearance. We're looking at all these people with these cars and these buildings and think that is of God because these people have these cars and these buildings and you're looking at the wrong thing. Their doctrines is off. They're calling everybody to come on in. Don't know who's in the gathering. Jesus didn't call for that. Timothy tells us to, to, to he told Timothy, the Apostle Paul did in the letter to make sure you give attention to you know, ex exhortation, reading your word, and continuing on in the doctrine. See, that's important because man to come drive you away with his enticing things and his enticing words. So you make sure that you continue on in the doctrine. I like what Michelle was saying. Um, you know, I, I think that a lot of times, you know, when you are connected and you're, you're, um, living life and you're staying prayed up and you're focused on God, um, you know, things are going well. And then some people start to get like really arrogant and cocky, you know, they're thinking, Oh, you know, things are going well. Um, and then they take their eyes off of God and things start falling apart and they don't understand why, you know, um, it's, this is just telling you, you know, without God, it's, <laughs> you're not going to be able to do anything really. Right. Right. It is. I like that, Jessica. It is. Yeah. Amen, Jess. Mm -hmm. So as we as we peek a little bit deeper into this scripture, because we got to understand what's going on here. We see that Jesus is doing a thing, and we can see that man is doing a thing too. And we also can see at the end of this doing, Jesus is going to gather up his who are in the spirit, and man is going to gather up his who ain't in the spirit. One's going to the promised land 
and the other one is going to burn. We can see that clearly. Now, what we have to understand is when we keep our eyes on the fruit of what Jesus called us to in Galatians 5.22, it'll be evident if people have works. See, people got work salvation, and they think they're going to sweep the floor in a church building and going to go do usher, but they can live in any old kind of way. So you got to be careful of that. You don't want to keep your eyes on the things and not on what God said to keep your eyes on, which is the fruit, the character. You're going to be a light, just like we talked about in Isaiah 60, 1922. You're going to be a light that's going to be radiating in the world of darkness. It's going to be evident on you. How are you so happy when all of this is going on? How you have peace? How are you not connected to the game? You know what I mean? See, we're going to have to do some things. We're going to have to disassociate ourselves. We're going to have to disconnect ourselves. I'm talking about in the face of our friends, we're going to have to do that. Not behind their back. We're going to have to do it in front of them so they can see the difference. Amen. I want to jump in there on the on the points that you're um, bringing up. Um, and, and I just wanted to say, because the scripture that came to my mind was that scripture, and I wish I could find it right now, but I'll, I'll find it. So you, if anyone wants to go to it, but it was the scripture where it says, um, you know, in the end times, you know, there will be men that will come to God and will say, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I feed the hungry and the poor in your name? Didn't I do this and that in your name? And it said, the Lord is going to say, you know what? I never knew you depart mm. from me you worker of iniquity. So I just said that to say kind of what I said earlier, people can be doing the work in their own might and in their own power. Some people want the status. Some people want the fame and the glory. Some people want the acknowledgement, right. but they're disconnected from the Lord. They're disconnected from the spirit. So the thing is we have to, and I like what uh, sister Jessica said is because we have to evaluate and check ourselves in our hearts and our walk daily. We have to daily because you can be disconnected and not know it. Mm. You cannot know it. And you know what? Just that scripture alone, the fact that the Lord said, you know, uh, and that last day it says that, uh, you know, Father, didn't I prophesy? So that lets me know that whoever that individual was, they thought they were okay. Mm -hmm. So that lets me know, even if we think we're okay, we need to be checking ourselves. You right. can be doing the work. You could be in the pulpit. You got men that are in the pulpit that, that are supposed to be pastors and they've been disconnected from God for a long time. They ain't even connected. They ain't even connected. You got dip, you got, so we have to, as brothers and sisters in the body, we also have to check. Everybody should be checking themselves daily and asking yourself, did I ask the Lord? Am I praying about things before I do it? Or is I, am I just doing things in my own mind? It's about me. It's about people looking at me. It's about people uh, calling my name out. It's about me being big. We need to be honest with ourselves. When's the last time I prayed and said, Lord, should I do this? Is this your will? Should I go here and speak? Father, is it your will that I go over here? When is the last time we've done that? Because if we're not doing that, we're not seeking the will of God. We're seeking our own will. So Ooh, I just wanted to bring, great. yeah. Amen. That's good, Michelle. Hello. Yes, amen. Hello. Hello, Amen. this is Pastor Derek and Mitchell. Amen. Yeah. Can I say something? Um, yeah, you just said some very wonderful things there. Sometimes when we are doing the work, we want to make sure that, that uh, the Lord is in it. Mm -hmm. We got to say, Lord, should I go there or shouldn't I go there? Should I do this thing here? Should I go preach in that church? Sometimes you got to let God, you know, be part of what you're doing. Because the, the Lord already made it clear to me that if I do my own thing, he, he was not going to recognize me. I have to do what he wants me to do. Mm -hmm. So the, the conversation this tonight, being connected to the vine, is so so very important thing that all Christians must pay attention to. Because uh, I, I want to make a real life example here. Uh, there's a there's a woman, uh, a man passed away. The man used to be a, a real man of God. He used to be on fire for God. He's a very, uh, you know, somebody that really loved the Lord. But when he passed away, and uh, I think his, his wife kind of like, um, you know, um, she, she not stay connected to the vine. Let me put it that way. Mm. And now she's, her life is, just fell, just fell apart. 
On a given day, she don't know where she is. She has been overtaken by demons. Mm -hmm. This is a, a woman that used to be married to a man who was very hard for God. And now she herself now, she just, she doesn't know where she, she is on a given day because of the level of demons that has possessed her. So we want to pray for her, but uh, she's not, nothing's happening because she's still stay disconnected. Her mind is not connected to God. Mm -hmm. And now she's being controlled by demonic powers. So this is, it's important to stay connected to the mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord knows if you are connected or not because he knows your mind, what you're thinking mm -hmm. and what is in your heart. Right. So I just wanted to kind of, kind of contribute that tonight. Amen. 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 That was good. Hallelujah. That was real Praise good. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to um, chime in. Um, that verse you're talking about, Michelle, earlier, it's in Matthew. It's chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Um, and I'd like to read it. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. That's the King new King James version. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jessica. Amen. Yeah. yeah. It's a very important. It's very important that we stay connected. Amen. One of the things also I wanted to mention about the spirit is that you can, you know, we're all continuing to evolve to perfection in God's word through his son, Christ Jesus, which, um, you know, 522 of John lets us know that the father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the son. See, that's what makes Jesus our God. The father gave it to his son and he sat back and he's the cultivator and he watches over and makes sure things go in according to his plan. See, and a lot of people can't make that transfer over from the father to the son, but you have to because John 3, 16 lets us know that God the father gave us his son and that if we believe on him, we should have everlasting life. See, it's on him. I don't care whatever language is in, whatever it's going to be Jesus, it's on him. It's how we come into salvation, how we come into the promised land to have everlasting life. So this, there's some things, you know, I can understand. And that's because Corinthians lets us know there's a lot of people that's trying to interpret something that's spiritual with a, with a carnal mind. That's why you have all this screw up and mix up. You got people who are worried about being in control instead of worried about being a pleaser of God. So you can't interpret anything spiritual with the carnal mind. You are always twisted up. We have a hard time in the spirit realm. <laughs> <laughs> the truth, you know what I mean? So I'm just saying, you have a reverent, have a reverential fear of what you're doing and, 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 and just blasphemy in God by wanting to look good and look at me, look at me. And, and God has not downloaded you with what you need to interpret his word. We need, that, we need that download. We need that connection to divine. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, cause we're talking about staying connected to the, to the vine. And so, um, the question I was going to throw out there is, and just some, I'm just kind of throwing this question out there, just a thought, mm -hmm. but the thought is how do you stay connected right. to the vine? Okay. Someone's listening, you know, we've got people listening on audio and on mm -hmm. online. So how do you stay connected to the vine? How do you stay connected by sanctifying yourself mm -hmm. sometimes you need to just steal away steal away mm -hmm. just you mm -hmm. and god we should be having private sanctified time mm -hmm. with the lord just us and the lord being in his presence praying getting into our word mm -hmm. meditating on the word so when we're reading the word we should be in our quiet space so that mm -hmm. we can hear when the holy spirit speaks to us because mm -hmm. if you read your word the word is alive Right. The word ain't dead. When we read the word, the word is moving. 
It's a lie. So if you read your word, you'll feel that thing move all up in your soul, in your heart, and in your mind. It's renewing your mind. Right. So the word is a lie. The word moves. So if you can get in your quiet space, it's important that we sanctify ourselves. We must make time for the Lord. Mm -hmm. We have to steal away. We have to turn off our computers. Mm -hmm. We have to turn off our favorite television show. Right. We got to turn off Netflix. We got to get off the <laughs> phone, gossiping or whatever we talking about. Mm -hmm. We got to make time daily, one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one with God. That's good you go to church. That's good you're mm -hmm. part of this group. That's good you're part of that group. Yeah. But you know what? <laughs> Ain't nothing like that intimate time with the Lord because that's going to be your intimate, building your intimate relationship. Amen. So we that's very important. Mm -hmm. And then fellowshipping with believers that are like-minded. Right, right. You know, so mm -hmm. these are, I just wanted to throw that out there because mm -hmm. we're talking about staying connected in case, you know, I thought that was important to go over. How do we stay connected? Mm -hmm. We got to steal away from the things of the world. Right. It's so much going on in the world. That means we got to, we got to st turn stuff off. Mm -hmm. Walk away because mm -hmm. otherwise you'll get so infiltrated with all the stuff that's going on, whether it be your personal family life, just your personal life at work, just it's just stuff all day, every day. So we have to be intentional. There's no such thing as, oh, I didn't have time. It's been a whole week and you ain't we ain't had time yet to spend time with God. Right. Mm -hmm. No, we got to feed our souls every this is daily. Mm -hmm. A couple of times a day for me, I steal away. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's Michelle, something that because, we have to do. <laughs> because he hit the nail on the head, Michelle. That is what it is. Go ahead. Well, let, go me, ahead. let me say hey. this, Michelle. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. Um, go ahead. Hold up right quick, Pastor Roman. Um, Jessica had her hand up. Okay. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Jessica. It's actually Charles. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Charles. Hey, my brother. Hey, God Charles. Bless. God bless you, sir. I want to follow up with, with what Michelle was saying because... I mean, it's so true. You, you have people that are listening and just kind of just tuning in and you talking about like hearing from God and you're talking about, you know, having a relationship with God. But mm -hmm. that's the most important question. What does that look like? How do you do mm -hmm. that? That really resonated with me when she began to talk because we were having a discussion last week at our Bible study here and we were talking about the relationship with God. Right. And so the person who doesn't have that connection, they're like, how do you connect with the invisible God, a God that you can't even see? So it kind of sounds strange. So it's so important. And I love that you pointed that out to be able to, you know, show people what that looks like. Stealing away and having that quality time for the Lord, that's exactly what that looks like. Because many of us don't even know how to hear God's voice. Mm -hmm. We don't even know what his voice sounds like because God is speaking to us all the time, but mm -hmm. we haven't learned his voice sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the most part, a lot of people haven't really, you know, and so, um, but that's how you get to know his voice. That's how you get to understand when he's communicating with you is you got to be able to set aside that quality, quiet time to get to know the Lord. And then, just to add one more thing to that, being honest with God. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you have to really be honest with God and say, God, hey, you know what? Lord, I haven't learned how to recognize your voice yet. Teach me mm -hmm. how to recognize your voice. Lord, I mm -hmm. haven't learned how to, you know, Amen. Hey, teach, me something. Mm -hmm. teach me how to do that. Or even, you know, Lord, I really don't trust you. Mm -hmm. I don't have that relationship that I hear some of your other children talk about. But Lord, I want to have that relationship. Teach me how to have that. Sometimes you have to be honest with God and tell him, oh, man. Me and be yeah. different. God is not offended by the fact that you That's say right. that you don't trust him. He's not offended by the fact mm -hmm. that you say, Lord, I don't really believe in you the way some other believers. God would be sitting in heaven saying, son or daughter, I've been waiting on you to ask me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Everybody. Yeah. What Michelle says, still away. You know, the spirits are still away to Jesus. Mm. And uh, where well, is the hymn we used to sing, Come to the Garden? But I like the word when it say, the voice I hear, no other voice I hear, 
Mm -hmm. is, uh, and so, he walked with me and he talked with me, none other than, other than Jesus. Well, that's not quite how it goes, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, it has always, always liked to that song, you know. So I think Brother Roman wanted to say something oh, too. Hold up. Yeah, we do. We got less than a minute, and I think it's winding mm -hmm. down and it's going to hang up. So we're going to just go out and we'll come back in and we'll finish up and pray out. But um, 